I do have one thing to read before we start. It says, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, was pending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter section 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the municipal building committee is being conducted by a remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in this order. A reminder that persons who would like to view this meeting while in progress may do so by tuning into Westboro TV. Okay, with that being said, um, first thing is, uh, do I have a uh, motion to um, accept the minutes of the February 3rd, 2021 meeting? So, Dexter, did you make the motion? I did. Do we have a second? I'll second it. This is Ian. Ian, second. Are there any comments or uh, anything? Hearing now, we'll do a roll call vote. Dexter? Aye. Jim Stewart? Aye. Uh, Ian Johnson? Yes. Al Gordon, yes. And Peter O'Neill? Peter, you're muted right now. How's that? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Is this for the minutes? Yeah, for the minutes. All right, yes, I agree. Okay, so that's um, unanimous with everybody present. Uh, minus Earl, I don't, I don't see Earl on here. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, Earl uh, was going to be tied up. Um, he did say he would be available. I could, I could get him if there wasn't a quorum, but he, he is tied up this morning. Okay, we have a quorum, so, um, so we're fine with that. Okay, with that being done, uh, we'll move on to our Peter Collins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, committee members. I hope you can see my screen which is kind of the cover sheet of the report. And uh, some of the topics we'll discuss this morning. Um, I'm gonna kind of turn it over a little bit to Jonathan Ennis from Five Star to give us an update. He did submit a uh, updated punch list on the 18th of February, which I have attached here if we wanna go through it. But Jonathan, anything new you wanna report on that? So I just need a response back to that last update. There was a lot of comments on there that needs to be expressed, which is why I submitted it. Really comment any more than what's on that punch list. If you want to bring it up, we can go through it, but there's really nothing else that I can talk about at this time. You've given me no feedback. Uh, do you feel we're at a point we could do a final walkthrough? We have done the final walkthrough. I mean, if you read through this, these items, I don't believe there's any other need to come back for a final walkthrough. There were a couple items that can be verified by yourself or even the town, which were also associated with the Tlaxcala Valley Port, and that was a grab bar in the bathroom of the police lobby. I don't necessarily believe we need to come back to look at that. Um, it can be verified. We sent photos, and then there's other comments addressing the other open items. Uh, Jim Stewart or Fred Leonardo, uh, were you in agreement with that? There are some items um, that I, I'm still kind of up in the air. I talked with Fred about this last night, um, John, and maybe you can refresh my memory on how they was how these were left. Um, there was some uh, the, the four bathrooms, the second, the two on the men's and women's on the third and second floor. Um, we had some tile work that was behind um, in the in the stalls that were behind when they changed the grab bars that uh, the wrong color tile, tile doesn't match, the grout lines don't match. Um, we discussed that when we did our, what we did our walkthrough. And um, where, where were we at that, on that? That was also commented on the updated punch list. And it was said that when Matt had replaced them, he had done it under certain stipulations. It wasn't even something that was necessarily a fix that needed to be owned by Five Star, but Matt went ahead and did it. And yes, we do believe that the grout tone and the color is a little bit off, and so may the tile color, or so isn't the tile, tile color, excuse me. But um, with the different batches of tiles, it does happen, and we don't feel as though it, it's anything that needs to be ripped out and replaced, and we are that one. And we didn't comment that on the punch list. 
Well, I mean, I, I you know, I know when me we talked about it, it is a cosmetic item, um, but I. I I, I don't recall just saying that we concede to all of that. I, I think there was still a question on what we were going to do with that um, after our walkthrough. I, I don't remember us ever, you know, settling that issue. You're right, and it was open, but our, our stance is that we don't feel as though it would make any sense to rip out the tile and do all that work, and you can't even guarantee that you're going to have the same exact color next time. So we feel as though it, it is functional and it should stay as it is. Uh, well, I guess that's a matter of opinion. Uh, I, I, you know, we, we've conceded to a, a bunch of cosmetic stuff in that building, um, and, and, and this appears to be one that we want to um, to take care of now. Um, you know, we want to just concede to this now. Um, Fred, I, I don't know. Do you want to chime in on this at all? Sure, Jim. So uh, the reason the tile was replaced is because the grab bars were never placed at the right height. Exactly. So it's 100 percent on. I don't care if you call it five star or one of the subs, but that was the reason the tiles were replaced because the holes were were uh, evident when the grab bars had to be moved. So it goes back to the original construction. You know, however you want to assess that. I agree that maybe it's not worth pulling the tile in the grout out, but there's a. I think they have a value assessment. Uh, uh, take the value of it or whatever, but I 100% agree it had to be done. Whether you want to, how you want to evaluate that and how you want to look at it is a different matter. Whether you want them to actually replace it, but there's, I don't think there's any disagreement that the grout and the tiles do not match, and it's evident. Is it going to mean a difference beyond the aesthetics? No. So if the functionality of the bathroom's not going to match. Yeah, and, and I agree with that. I think at this point it doesn't make any sense to start tearing that stuff apart because, you know, the chances of it looking any different when we're done. However, um, I mean, is that the, is it, there's got to be some type of a value to this because it, you know that's you know everybody walks in there. Um, we haven't had an open house in that building as of yet, and, and when they do, that that's going to be something I guarantee you was brought up and talked about. With, with members of the public. I mean, it, you know, we paid a lot of money for the building and, and um, you know, it's unfortunate that it had to happen because it, it looked right before, except for the grab bars with the wrong height. So, um, you know, I guess that's something we can discuss as far as a, a monetary value to, to, to those items um, and just move on with it and concede it from there. If, if the board allow, if the board agrees, I mean, that, uh, the right. committee agrees. That that's you know, I don't think that's my decision or, or I think I think it's probably um, you know everybody that's on this call's decision. Jim, Jim were the uh, tiles and the growth that was put in there after the work was done? Were those taken from the attic stock? I, I believe they were. Um, I, I'm sure that Five Star didn't bring tile, knowing that we had tile there. Um, I, I don't know if just the wrong ones are grabbed out of the stock. Um, it, it was, I think, it was Kevin from Five Star that that did that work. Um, and you know, I, I don't, I wasn't on site when they did it, so I don't know where he got the tile from. But um, I, I'm assuming that's where it came from. I know that attic stock was was counted after that repair, so you still have your complete amount of attic stock. So whether or not it came from the attic stock, which I can't even speak on. It, you still have your full amount. Yeah, of I'm not. I'm not questioning that, Jonathan. I'm not. I'm not saying that. You know, we don't have the complete attic stock. Um, it, it was. He was. I think Al was just referring. Is is that where it came from? Um, so why would the colors be different if it was the same exactly. tile? But um, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that the attic stock is off. We're we're all set with the attic stock. Can I ask a question? Go ahead, Peter. Um. Jim, this would be to you. It, yep. Is is the color of the tile similar, but maybe a batch, the batches of tile were slightly off colored or not the same color, or is this completely different color tile? No, it, it's very similar, uh, Peter. It, it uh, 
I mean, it might have matched, you know, one of the other bathrooms, you know, as they were doing it. And then when they went to the attic stock, there's, it's no, it doesn't say which bathroom used which tile. Um, so, yes, it could, it's just a, a batch difference, batch color difference, but it's completely noticeable. And then, you know, the grout lines were all, it, it looks like they're probably eighth inch grout lines and, and the grout lines on where the repair were made don't match um the, the rest of it so it definitely sticks out um you know in those four bathrooms so not to interject i'm sorry the the grout as uh jim alluded to is a shade different but it's also physically a size difference yeah if you measure the the tiles they're not tremendously different but they're you know an eighth three sixteenth of an inch difference in either direction so well what i was getting at is if if the tile came out of the same, say, attic stock that was what was left for us for repairs, and it wasn't quite right, it, it, say it was from a different order or a different shipment or a different batch that the company made, uh, that means anytime we patch anything, we're going to have this problem, as opposed to if we got it out of box A and the room was done with box A, the tile should be very close to the same size, and they should be the same uh tint of color i mean they should be very very similar grout lines i understand that could be slightly different they wouldn't be different because the tile should be the same size so i i guess i have a slight issue with some of that um the tile out of the same and unless there's other boxes of tile for other bathroom and they did get mixed up then i'd like to know that as well i don't know how do we figure that out well i think that's what the case is um peter that that you know all the bathrooms have the same, you know, like I said, when you, when you put the wrong one there, you can tell, but maybe, maybe that was for, you know, out of the batch that did the second floor women's room. And this is the first floor. I mean, this is the third floor men's room. So it might've matched in one spot, but it doesn't match in another. And um, I, I think that's probably what the case was, um, you, you know, on these, the attic sock when it was delivered, it comes in, you know, in, in cases and gets put away and and it doesn't designate which bathroom it, it you know came out of that'd be something that when we you know if we were to make our own repairs or need to we you know we'd pay a little bit more attention and make sure that you were grabbing the right ones um where i i don't feel like that was the case here they just went down said up oh, here's the tile opened the box and 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 went and um I mean, it's, it's obvious when they got there and they saw that, you know, it, it didn't match, they still put it on the wall and they still grouted it in. And, and um, but, you know, oh, it didn't, okay. well, that's what happened, well, you know? I, I think if that's the case, then I, I think the tile should be taken out and the, the right match should be done. I mean, it, this is a brand new job. This isn't something that we came in 20 years later and said, hey, we have to change something in the bathroom and we have to put a tile in. You know, I, I, you, that I accept, but this is brand new. We should have had very, very similar size and color of tile. I mean, I, I guess I'm not a, I'm not willing to accept it. I guess is what I'm going to say because I, I know in my business I couldn't, I wouldn't have people that would accept me coming in and doing that. And why should the town be any different? I mean, it's ultimately all of our money. And it's not a big deal in the overall thing, but it's a deal. It's something that isn't right. And it, so you bend on this one and you bend on the next one. And, the, you know, the heaters are in my, come back to the heaters. I mean, that's a fiasco. But um, I just don't know if I'm going to be willing to sign off on that. I think I, if the towel grab bars were put in the wrong place and they had to be changed, that isn't us. That isn't on us. And if the towel guy grabbed the wrong tile and put it in, that's still on them. So as far as I'm concerned, this is still outstanding. Again, it's a little thing, but it's, you know, I'm, I'm not going to give in on it. I mean, my position is I want that thing right. Peter, can, can I step in here, Peter? I, I, I'm also concerned about that, but I think I'm more concerned with the size of the your replacement tiles, whether they be attic stock or other stock, rather than the color. If the color's off a little bit, I understand the lots and, and so forth. But as you say, Peter, if they took it from the attic stock to replace it, then it should be damn close to the same color because that attic stock should have been from the same lot that we used in the, throughout the building. I don't see that there's any difference. I mean, they order a two cases and they order three because they need one extra case for the 
out for the attic stock and it should all be from the same lot. So again, but my concern more is with the size of the, is, as Fred says, the size of these tiles is a tad larger than the ones that are in place. Whoa, that's a problem, I think. Well, and that's why I get back to, if you're gonna make the repair with the same tile, we wouldn't notice that there was a tile difference, a size difference. I agree on the color somewhat, but if it came out of the same stock or the same three boxes or whatever, then both things should be in alignment. Both the tile I, and I agree with that. And I, the color. I think and, we're being snooked here. I just think, I, 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 I don't know how we do it, but I, I'm not willing to accept that. How's that? I'm, I'm not willing to accept that. And it's not a big deal on this one, but it may be a big deal on the next one. And I, I just don't agree with it. I'm not trying to hold somebody to the fire for a little tiny thing, because we all have little tiny issues in the construction industry. But this is just one more in the list of things that keeps going on. And, and the tile should be at least the same size and a tint, a slight tint different, I could understand. So that's my position on it. Thank you. Okay, do we have any more comments on this? Okay. Just, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Peter Collins again. Just yes. uh, back, getting back to the overall discussion, um, Jonathan, you mentioned your office feels the punch list is complete and there's not a need to return to the site to do a final walkthrough. Um, if that's your, is that your final position? If that's the case, I'll work with Westboro and we will do a final walkthrough and make a determination. Yeah, we feel as though unless you, there's a specific issue that you need us on site for, then we can arrange that. But other than that, the, the few items that were on there that have been corrected can be verified in the building without us traveling out there again. Uh, can I just make one more comment, please? Go ahead, Fred. Um, on item number 26, that hasn't been done either on this list. The panel actually just came in last week, Fred. Well, that's fine, but did, somebody's got to come back and do that, Jonathan. Yes, I understand that, and we did put on, we commented, yeah, that it was expected on the 22nd, and um, that's where it stands still, so, and had that as completed. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I just highlighted it on the screen for those who want to know what 26 is. You know, it, it seems to me there's probably a consensus here that we want the tile in the bathroom to be fixed, to be matching exactly what's there, and it's it's something that's definitely uh, on our list that needs to be done. Well, Five Star still disagrees. We do. I, I ne was never aware that there was even a size discrepancy, and I don't believe there is. Uh, I do agree that there is a little bit of a different shade, and that's a grout top. I, I we still stick with the fact that it is a slight cosmetic issue, and that we are not going to replace those tiles again. No, I think that's where we all disagree because it wasn't to the uh, level that it was installed initially and because the grab bar was put in the wrong place and it had to be fixed. Uh, whoever did the work obviously didn't go through and get the right tiles and put it in correctly. So, uh, you know, we're certainly not going to agree to accept it as is. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. If, if I may ask um, yourself and the fellow committee members, it appears at this time the, the contract of Five Star uh, feels the punch list is complete. I would make a recommendation upon the approval of the committee that the OPM, the facilities director, and the building commissioner uh, schedule a time to walk the building and make a initial determination on the completed items and then report back to the committee. Can we get a motion for that? Anybody willing to make a motion to yeah, uh, so moved out? I had to get off mute. Making a motion to uh, have the uh, final walkthrough done by the town. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, Peter O'Neill seconded. Um, do uh, anybody have any comments about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Al. I, I, I sound like a dink now. I keep bringing up different items. One thing that really came up too, and I thought uh, Jim may have commented at some point, is the outside repair of the limestone. Yeah, that hasn't come up, I don't think, yet, Jim. There was some on that as well. 
It, it, final look where it is on this. Uh, 20. 20. 20. Okay. That was one of my questions. Thank you, Fred. I, can I speak now? Up here. Um, when we originally did this, did was waterproofing the building, or and this goes back a long time, I know, and um, but it, if we redid all this work on the building and we had masonry work done on side, did it include repointing or sealing of areas that were of um, potential water problems or? Were water problems? I mean, I, I, I know we talked about a few things on the facade or the outside of this building. Yeah, yeah this is Peter, this is Brian. Uh, as part of the project scope, we had masonry cleaning and masonry repointing. We also had some limestone, limestone repairs, but we did not call for a sealer, and we don't really recommend a sealer uh, on this building. Okay. So, and that's fine. I, I guess if I'm... Uh, I understand there are some leaks down from the outside going in on the back of the building. Um, if if we had all this work done, should we still have water penetration in the building is what, what I guess I'm saying. And we ran into this with the town hall when we did the clock tower and the roof and all that kind of stuff. And we went back and forth on that a, a lot of times. And hopefully that one's fixed. But here's a a building that we just spent a lot of money on and the repointing and on certain days and certain weather conditions, it takes water. I don't think that's right. And I don't know exactly what the issue is, but I don't know why it wouldn't have been addressed if we had the building repointed. Um, I don't think the money we spent was a small amount. I think we spent a fair amount. And if it's still not right, then that should not be a completed and if that has to do with the limestone, as part of where brick come to limestone, I mean, that's still an area that's outstanding as far as I'm concerned. As far as limestone repairs, that was primarily around the entrance doors right. on the West Main Street elevation. Right. Uh, we have some decorative limestone that's around the entry doors, and that's where the repairs were, were called for. Are the leaks that you're talking about, have they been investigated and tied to a masonry condition? Uh, I can't tell you all that. I just know that there was water coming in, I think, in one of the offices downstairs in the police station. And it happens on certain weather conditions, which to me uh, would be uh, evidence that the outside of the building is not water tighter. I don't know what the right term would be, but water shouldn't be coming in. How's that? Brian, I, I can answer that question. It's it's on the front of the building. Um, it actually comes into, um, I'll call it the, the dispatch area where um, uh, when people come to the window from the lobby, the uh, records, yeah, right there. So above that window, there's a, a ledge that runs across the whole front of the building. And when we had snow that sits on that ledge and then it warms up um, right there, it drips in through the building um, and lands on the window, the big window sill that's right there. It, it may be dissimilar materials. If you have a, a joint between um, a precast or a stone and a masonry product, there may be differential movement that those would be a caulk joint. So that's one thing that you would look at. The, the masonry on the building was in pretty good shape. We had selective repointing. We didn't repoint 100% of the building. It was in pretty good shape. And the masonry does want to be a breathable material. I mean, sealing those is not always a good solution. Uh, you might think you're you're creating a weather barrier, but you're actually prohibiting the breathe the breathability of the masonry. And so I would look at any of those joints between dissimilar materials. And if you're saying it's a ledge, I'm assuming that it's a maybe a ledge of a different product than brick. Uh, so there, it, may be, there may be a cock joint there that needs to be addressed. Uh, I, I, that's absolutely what it is. It's just we need to be able to, you know, in the wintertime, it's kind of hard to set ladders up and get up there to do it. But it's, um, you know, we, we've isolated where it's coming in. Um, 
you know, we will take care of it, obviously. But, you know, in, in winter months, it's not ideal to go up there and try to caulk this now. Um, the only caulking we had on the exterior was at the new windows. So there sh it shouldn't be an issue at the window surrounds. Those were all uh, caulked on the main floor with new windows being placed on the main floor. Yeah, it, it's not the windows. It's definitely coming from that ledge because if we, we go to get out there with snow rakes and we pull the, the snow, the sitting snow off of there and it, it stops the leak from coming in. So it's we we haven't isolated where it is. It's just because of the location and the time of year, it, it, we haven't had the chance to get up there and fix it. But that doesn't have anything to do, like, like we said, about the limestone. The limestone is around the entrances um, and that was never completed. And I believe it was part of the scope of work. And I, and I, I do see Five Star's response about, you know, Ted 50 making an agreement to, to swap off stuff. And, and I just, I, I don't buy that. Um, first of all, Ted 50 didn't, would never have had that uh, um, authority to do that without bringing it to the building committee or anything like that. And I don't believe any of us ever heard of it. And that might've been before I was on the, on the committee, but um, you know, I, I certainly never heard of, him swapping off stuff well i can confirm that ted was working with the mason contractor on scope uh we do have emails back and forth about limestone repairs at the entrance and this is when then ted had introduced to the committee some additional masonry repairs that he was coordinating through the mason contractor on the exterior wall there was some additional repointing on that west main street entrance that that was done um so there is some correspondence that that does show that Ted was working with the Mason contractor on that on this scope. But, well, he was working with them on the scope, but did it, does it does the correspondence actually say that okay, we'll trade you this for that? Well, uh, that I can't that I can't comment on. I, I don't I don't have that recollection. You know, right. He could not, he could not have done a trade off anyway without our permission, correct? Correct. I I do know that limestone repairs were done. That, and I think it's just now whether that scope has been completed to the satisfaction of the of the town. I can show you what we had on our drawings for scope, as far as what was done. I've looked at the at what the scope was supposed to be, Brian, and, and, and I think you would agree. It is definitely at the entrances yeah. where, where it comes in. And um, what I see is it, it hasn't been done. Um, you know, it, it, there hasn't been some repair that you know which that that didn't work. It's not to that scope at all. It, it's the fact that um, nothing's been touched around those doors, and and it's quite evident. You know, when you when you walk in the building. So, Mr. Chair, I guess the question I have is, to the motion that we have here, it sounds like there are issues, but do we go forward with the motion and then have, um, you know, Peter, Jim, and Fred go through with this punch list and comment where, instead of going piece by piece now, it sounds like there are right. some issues. Let's go through the whole thing, figure out where we um, may disagree, and then bring that back. Yeah. I agree with you, Ian. I think if you know if we vote to um, have them do the final walkthrough, this certainly should be coming up as an item that needs to be addressed before we, we're going to sign off on the building. You know, not that I'm, I'm sure there's many others that they that Jim and uh, Brian Fred are aware of that will will appear on the list. Okay. okay. With that, is there any further comment? Okay, hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Dexter? Did we lose Dexter? All right, Peter O'Neill? This is to accept uh, doing a walkthrough? A walkthrough with, uh, with the, for the town, uh, yes. All right, so this has nothing to do with accepting the report. No. Okay, I, I'll second that. Or okay. I'll agree with that. All right, Ian Johnson? Yes. Okay, uh, Jim Stewart? Yes. Al Gordon, yes. I don't know if, is Dexter back on? No, I think we've lost Dexter. So, uh, I, see, I see him on, I just see him on mute if I look at the... Okay. Now he's gone. No, he's left yeah. the meeting, it says. Okay, well, we, we still have four members present, so uh, with that, um, that's been authorized to take place.
Okay, we'll go back to Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, moving down the list on item three, three A, sub Roman numeral number two. Uh, Jonathan, could you give us an update on any work or activities? And Jim, if you could also add any commentary with respect to the rooftop units. So on my end, the only thing that I'm working off of is the CX log at this point, and they're doing some CO2 sensor work. And they are also repairing two small ducts in lieu of one larger one. So that brings the open items that are owned by Adams and AJ Roberto. And other than that, we're still waiting on three responses from the town. It's been a couple months now. So Jonathan, is there any open items in, in your, your mind regarding the rooftop units? Unless there's been any issues that I haven't heard of since, I, I do not believe so. We're still going by the issues listed on the CX log. No one, I haven't heard of it. Well, I can speak for the, the fact that RTU 3 was shut down this morning um, and we had no heat on the uh, second and third floor. Um, Danny caught it and uh, went up and the unit was shut down. We had to reset it and it's come back to life now. But um, as far as those rooftop units, we're not even near complete on anything with that, Jonathan. I can tell you that right now. Um, Peter, at the last meeting, we asked that the report that was done there uh, and that shows something with electricity, was that ever forwarded to National Grid for their people to look at for uh, their input? Not by me, no. Does anybody know if it was forwarded? Obviously, nobody's responding, so it wasn't forwarded. Peter, can we make sure that the report gets forwarded to National Grid? Because uh, obviously, uh, we want to find out from them what they have to say about this. Yes, I will, I will make sure that gets done. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I'd like to just speak on the items um, that, that uh, Jonathan brought up about the town's need, wants the town's response. Um, I believe that's items um, 73, 74, and 75. It's actually 75 through 77. 75? 75, 76, 77. Okay. Um, well, the town's going to take care of that on our own. There, there'll be, as far as the, um, um, you know yeah. that would require a, a change order and everything like that. We're gonna the town's gonna use its own contractors to take care of the, those items. I think all three of those items really pertain to overcooling, Jim. So these are summertime issues that you want to take care of before the next, uh, cooling season. Sure. Yeah, with some reprogramming, um, you know, it, it was put into specs. Um, <laughs> it, it was Roberto's. Uh, you know, answer to it, and we agree with that. And um, the reprogramming, we're going to take care of on our own. Great. So I guess we can issue that response back to NV5 um, so they can close out those items 75, 76, and 77. And there are no other design issues on the commissioning lot. Okay, I'll work with um, Jim Stewart and the commissioning agent to clear item 75 through 77. Jonathan, can you go back to, so what remains in your perspective regarding the rooftop units? So again, I'm just referring to the CX log because those are the issues that I'm aware of and it's in two small ducks in lieu of a large one that they are working on. I need to get an update from Adam, see if they've completed that. They just got the response last saying that it was acceptable to, to do the two small vents. And then, so that would be item 21. That's one of three. And then 40, or sorry, excuse me, 73 is they needed to add CO2 sensors that were called for, and they were going to add them to the BMS system. And we need to just verify where, what locations they're adding them to and how many. And then there was another CO2 sensor that had been installed incorrectly. They had a new one on order, and that was the last update we got from them. So I need to verify if they've received it and installed it. And that would be 
So item 73 and 74, and that would be the last three items on the CS blog. Uh, we have 93 also. 93, which one is that? Radiant heat panels, the last one on the list. They're gonna replace the control valve head. Thank you, Brian. Okay, so beyond that, Jonathan, your office and the subcontractors feel the rooftop units are 100% um, operational and turned over to the owner as complete. I'm speaking on the CX log. As far as any ongoing warranty work that Adams is working with the town on, I, I can't speak on that until we have Adams on the call. So with the CX log, yes, we believe it is close to being 100% complete. Okay. Anything else, Jim, on the, on the rooftop units? Not on, not on the rooftop units, but, uh, and I'm just trying to go through the, if it's correction of action log or if it was on our punch list, we have a uh, cabinet heater in the main entrance of the building that um, runs constantly. Uh, I had Roberto, when we had training the other day, look at it. Um, he basically said that, that the thermostat's not wired. It, uh, I don't know if the wires weren't provided uh, or, or what, but it, it just runs constantly and we control it by shutting the breaker off when it gets to be 85 degrees in the lobby there. We, we have to kill it by the by the breaker in, inside. So that, that one is an open item. We had discussed that with um, Adams um, previously and um, it, it still remains the same. Is this not the one that's in the storage area? Nope. This is the one that's in the main entrance of the building. On the, uh, I don't recall seeing that on the list. On the Parkman Street side. Yeah, if you could point out what item that is on the punch list, I can have that addressed again. I just am not 18. 18? That, that issue was just for loose thermostat, and those had all been completed. That's not what he's speaking of. Am I in, am I correct? Well, we, we we've had an ongoing issue, Jonathan, with that with those um, cabinet heaters. Um, the, they the last time that Adams was here doing punch work, they fixed the one um, in the back entrance on the same side of the building, um, but the front entrance was never addressed. And that just, that runs constantly. So that one was the one that, again, we were addressing, I thought, the fact that it was loose from its mounting on the wall. And what I thought when we had gone through, we had touched the dials on every single one of them, and they did instantly turn on and off. No, no. Sure no. How this no we, never, we never did. And you can check with Wes on this. They were there. They're aware that that, that unit isn't functioning properly. That's what I'll do. I'll just I'll follow up with Adams and see what uh, what they have to say about it. May I ask a question? Go ahead, Fred. Peter. Oh, Peter. Um, uh, Jim, you said one of the thermostats was not wired. Well, this is what Robert, what AJ Roberto said to me when we did training last week with him, and um, I brought him down there. And he said there was some, something in the thermostat. The thermostat was not functioning because it, it wasn't wired into the unit. Um, and, you know, Adams is aware of this because, as, as I was told by them, and um, they would be correcting it. And it was left as that. Now, I, I don't know um, how they plan on fixing it. We, we you know, I, I was never a fan of these thermostats on the wall anyway. This is a, a public building. And, you know, if you have thermostats mounted on a wall, um, if anything, they should be in a lockbox so people can't, you know, reach in there and touch them. Um, I know over at the town hall, the thermostats are actually installed inside the cabinet of the heater, um, which is secured with a, uh, a safety bolt, so you can't just open it up and, and get in there. Um, but that wasn't the case in the Forbes building. They, they put these, you know, thermostats on the wall and, um, that one's not functioning. Um, it, the, the thing just runs all the time. So 
if, if the if the thermostat wasn't wired properly, I don't know how we can say we the people that put it in that it's now okay because somehow not having a thermostat wired to its control unit uh, <laughs> makes me think that it ain't okay. Um, oh, it's not okay. But, but... So I, I, I'm just back on the uh, punch list thing, and I know that we've passed by that already, but it says thermostats at all vestibule cabinet heater units are, not, are loose and not properly anchored. Not only that, one or more may not have been wired. So but, I don't know how we can say that that's, the, the only one we're having a problem with, Peter, is that that one unit. The other three are, are functioning properly now. We, there, there was an issue with the one in the back, um, and it was more than just the thermostat being loose. And I went over it with um, Adams on one of their visits, and, and they did correct it. Um, so all three of the other units are functioning properly. It's just the one on the um, Parkman Street side of the building, the main entrance into the building, that... Um, we're having an issue. It, just, it 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 won't shut off. It just runs constantly. And it, you know, it's okay when it's you know ten degrees and fifteen degrees out. It, it, it's okay, but uh, you know, you get a day supposed to go in the forty. We have to go physically shut it off at the breaker panel um, so that it's not eighty five degrees when you walk in through that door. Yeah. So in my opinion, that, that we still have an outstanding issue on that as well. Absolutely. All right. Jonathan, you said you're going to have Adams look at that? Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up to them. Again, I wasn't aware that it was running 24-7. That wasn't anything that was noted. I thought we heard that at our last meeting. I thought Jim had mentioned that at our last meeting. So and I'm, a question, and if the one in the storage area was running 24-7, there was a question of that. So that was a different unit. Okay. Building. I understand there are multiple units. Okay. Guess we're all set with that then. I think we are, Mr. Chairman. If it's um, so, it looks like we talked about the rooftop units. If there's no further comment, we'll take a look at that commissioning report. Five star indicated. There's a few items left. Can we get into owner training? Sure. Um, as of, as of uh, right now, um, I'm going to consider our owner training complete. Um, I had Roberto at the building. We went through uh, half a day session. Um, you know, it was what it was. He, he didn't really come prepared. He didn't have an agenda with him. He, I don't even think we signed in. I don't even think he had a sign-in sheet, and he didn't have it videoed. But we went through it. We did. We did the training. Um, I conceded with him that th there's still three days of training that's owed to us, and um, there's some issues with uh, some of the graphics on the um, on the on the BMS system and uh, a few other things that were put in per specifications. And um, at this point, you know, I, there, there's a few things I'd like changed that that kind of a little bit out of specs. And it's purely number one is the graphics. The second floor is still showing the the police chief's office up there rather than you know the detectives' wings. You know, there's stuff that's not labeled properly. There's a few other. Um, little items like um, thermostat control. I'm not able to make adjustments on a thermostat control. Sometimes when we, I get a call that somebody's cold in their office, um, I'll log on the BMS and I'll see that they have their thermostat adjusted down to, um, it, it's a left or a right turn, plus or a minus, and we use a three degree uh, window each way. Um, and I'll see that they have it set all the way up. So they must've been warm one day and turned it all the way down. Um, which would make the set point 65 degrees, which is a little bit cool when it's cold out. Um, and rather than, you know, in, in, in all my other buildings, rather than have people physically go over and start turning thermostats, I'm able to um, click on that thermostat and make the adjustment myself. And I set it for a, a certain period of time um, and it corrects the problem and nobody knows the wiser. Uh, I'm not able to do that with this system. And, and that's the way it was designed and put in. Um, and I'm fine with that, but Tony said he will make that change. And uh, th there's a few other little items like that that um, we're gonna use to uh, work off the rest of the, the time that's that's owed to us. 
Jim, if I can just interrupt for one second. I'm not sure if Fred needs to leave, if he's got okay. another meeting or anything. Uh, thanks for asking. I'm okay right now. Thank okay. you. Okay, Fred. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, so anyway, that, that stuff, um, you know, I've conceded with, I've, I've, uh, we had our training with um, Energy. Uh, they, they have delivered their last bit of, um, last pallet, I should say, of, of um, attic stock. Um, we did our training. John, the, who was the foreman on the job, was the one that administered that training. And, um, you, you know, any, any items that we had, uh, we went over with him. Um, I, I will just on a side note like to say that uh, John did come to my office after the, the training was complete because he asked me about our, our as builts. And uh, I brought him to my office and I showed him what we had for as builts. And he was a little disappointed because he said that that's his, his as builts that he had provided with all his notes on it um, showed a lot more than what we have. Uh, on our as built set that, that the town accepted. And, um, you know, he, John was nice enough to tell me that he would get get his copies and make sure I get a copy of it so that we can, um, you know, have a more detailed as built of to what, what happened in the project. Um, so as far as owner training goes, um, I consider it all complete at this time. You know, like, Peter? No, I'm okay. Thank you, Jim. Uh, that goes for all disciplines of work. You okay with that? Jim? I guess Sorry. You yes, I, I am, Peter. I'm, I'm all set with that. Okay. So I know you spoke a lot about the HVAC, but we can sign off on, just to reiterate, all training, all disciplines. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Next item, close out documentation. I think we're good there. Except what we just mentioned about the as-built drawings. Um, there's some discrepancies in the final delivery of those. So we'll talk about that. We already have some correspondence underway to try to get that cleaned up a little bit. So I guess uh, this is John again, and I'm not sure what the discrepancy is. We've provided all the documentation from Energy at the time to all the entities that they needed to be reviewed by and approved by, and they were approved, signed off on, and closed out on multiple occasions. And the hard copies were given and signed off on by Jim himself when I turned them in at the building. So I'm not sure what discrepancies are left to stay open on the punch list. If you guys want to work outside of the punch list on items you feel as though you're missing, then that's fine. I'm just not sure what would be left open on Five Stars End. Jonathan, what I'm saying is, is you know, I signed off on those. They were presented as as built. I looked at them. Fred looked at them. We, we've all looked at them um, and accepted them. Correct. The, the foreman on the job asked me about it, and I took him to my office and showed him what I had, and he's the one that stated to me, well, I have much more stuff on the as built that he turned into his office. Um, they're the ones that chose not to or didn't put them on on the as built that was sent to the town. I, I didn't even realize the, there was a discrepancy until um, it was brought to my attention. Um, and you know that that's all I was. I was just reporting that that's that was the case. I'm not saying that I'm going back on you and saying you need to adjust these closeout documents. I'm going to work that. Um, with energy m myself and John's going to take care of. He also had um, photos that he had taken of everything that he said he would provide me. So I'm working on that uh, on the side and, and it has nothing to do with you know, me, me coming after uh, or the town coming after, uh, you know, five star for closeout documents or, uh, and additional items. This is something else. Okay, that's fine. I appreciate that. I, I just want to make sure it doesn't stay as an open item on the punch list as Peter's making it seem as it's going to. Jonathan, I was pointing out that the drawings were incomplete. They did not reflect the actual as-built conditions. And I raised that to Jim's attention and to your attention the other day. That's my and point. And I don't, I don't agree with that, Peter. That's what I'm saying. I think that he, he's saying that, you know, there was additional information that for whatever reason, it wasn't needed or it wasn't approved. So what was approved was given and it's closed out on our end. So I'm asking that. Then, take a look at the electrical as-built, the underground conduits, 
to the sally port i mean excuse me sure, i understand what's port. on there and those were the and the not shown are not shown yeah. they're incomplete they're incomplete Peter, they're not incomplete they were approved by all the entities they were given to and reviewed by how are they incomplete i i will send a separate correspondence to you jonathan you'll see and it's up to jim and the town if they want to pursue it so the town is not accepting it jim can i ask you guys are not accepting the approved uh, or electrical as built nor the site as built. Jonathan, I want to just tell you this. I'm in a situation where um, I'm needing to know what's underground, heading, you know, heading over towards the explorer post and heading over towards the generator. And the as built that we have do not show that. They do not show what's under the ground. And you know, when I mentioned that to John, because I wanted, I, I tried to pick his brain because he's the one that actually did the work. That's how this whole as built got brought up and how he wanted to see what I had. And I showed him and he said, it was all on my drawings that I submitted to my office as as built. And for some reason, they're not on the, the paper copies or the digital copies that I have. And, and that's that's the case. Um, there was a need for me to know what was under the ground. There was a need to me to know how many pipes were coming into the building, and, and that information is not on the ad bills. So I, I'm just kind of confused on why they were approved by BVH and you know all recorded for record, and then again they went to the site survey. Those are reviews. Oh, and then the town engineer even signed it off based on all that information. This was uh, you know, three months ago for the third site survey, and the electrical as built were approved and reviewed a year ago. So now this is now an issue. I, I'm, this is just super confusing. I'm not sure why this wouldn't have been brought up a year ago. Before it was approved and allowed to go to a site survey and then approved by the town. They went through the five step office as well. Did, you, did the five-star office prepare them and send them on as approved as well? We review them from our subcontractor based on the information they give us, and then we give them to the appropriate entities, which would be BBH, you know, Jakunski Hume, and then from there to Peter, yourself, and from there it's to whoever else the town would like to review them, and within a reasonable time frame. And there was nothing else that had been given back by the town, no negative comments. And then when we went forward to then create the site survey plan, it was reviewed by BBH again, Jakunski Humes, and then we even gave it to the town engineer at Westboro, which went over all the documents and then signed and approved it. We have all the correspondence showing that. So I'm not sure what more you're looking for from Five Star. Bottom line, they're incomplete. I mean, right, we don't agree it's with that, Peter, but thank you. Jonathan, can you can you understand where I'm what I'm saying though? There, there's there's conduits that are under the ground that do not show up on the site survey plan. They do not show up on the as built for the electrical. There's there's things that are incomplete that that I was not aware of that uh, at the time that they were delivered to the town. And Jim, they, hold on. I'm, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but a lot of this conduit work was submitted as SKs, which are drawings. We own as-built drawings, not record drawings. So these SKs should eventually be added in with our as-built drawings. But that's a complete different thing. These weren't just made up on site. These were directives that were given to us on SKs. Okay. Can I ask an ignorant question, what's an SK? It's, it's, a, it's a change on site where that's been given by the architect to okay, um, all right. They went over to the, the generator, for example, or yeah. You know, okay. Was... Yeah. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. All right. Back to you, Peter. I know it's Okay. Down the list, owner maintenance stock. How are we doing on that? It's all. It's all been delivered to the building. It's all. It's all set. So maintenance stock is complete, Jim. Yes. Jim, did by chance you check the attic stock for the tiles to see if they were in fact the same size and the same color, either by uh, lot number or by uh, visual comparison? We did not open the new boxes that were delivered to the t delivered to the town. Might that might that not be a prudent thing to do? Well, I. I, I, I 
when, when someone supplies us with attic stock and they say that this is complete, I mean, I, we, we got the quantity that we needed. That was checked. Yeah, um, but if the, but if the tiles if, if the tiles came out of that box and, and or that lot and the lots are totally off lot, your color's going to be off and or your size is going to be off. I, I'd you know, go back to what Peter O'Neill said originally. I think that you ought to check that just to be sure. You got mail. Well, it, I, it wasn't done at the time that the attic stock was delivered to the building. Well, it's not too late. Okay, next item, Jim, anything on the carport roof drains and the gutters? Yes, um, I received the estimate from uh, the electrician, um, which I, I I, I tried forwarding that to you this morning, Al. I don't know if you received it. I, for some reason, it's still showing in my outbox. And I also sent it to you, Peter. Um, we have, uh, let me just close this one. Uh, to electrify the roof, I mean, at $24,941. Um, that would be the doing the bottom, I, I believe it will, does it say here, two feet, the bottom two feet, um, the gutters would be electrified and the downspouts, um, they would have sensors all installed in it. And, um, and that's 85, there's 85 feet of gutter on each side of that. Um, and then they also supplied me with a, quote to do the uh, lighting that was asked for by the chief for underneath the carport. That came in at $9,850. Um, that would be putting 16 vapor tight LED fixtures under the carport. Uh, I know that was just something on the side note that I had the electrician do because it was asked of me by the chiefs to um, See if we get some lighting under there. Uh, the gutter quote is still pending. Um, I had Tony from Fox Gutter uh, send me an, an email the other day. I apparently had lost my contact information. He ended up getting it through another source, um, letting me know that he's just about got that all wrapped up and he'll be sending me the quote for the gutter. Um, one of the other we're on carport, but I will bring it up just while well, we could probably bring it up on the ADA stuff. But I also did get my quote from Stanley door to take care of um, the doors that we needed to have the um, closes put on for the building. And that comes in at it's not counting electricity. Um, $8,900. Jim, that work on the, um, on the carport, that didn't include the amount that it would cost for the excavation by the downspouts into the drain? That's true. It doesn't count for the, um, John, well, I had John Fire look at it so that he just could give me a, you know, could we do it and, and how would it go? Um, I did not get a, a, a price back from John because we, from what the gutter people tell me, the original plan that I was hoping could work um, won't work. Um, we actually have to install four downspouts, in, one in each corner. Um, so the excavation part of it's going to become a little larger than just, I was hoping that everything could go to the middle. And then we could take it to from there to the um, one on each side and take it to the catch basins. But uh, apparently that's not going to be the case. Um, it's the 85 feet is, is too long to uh, to do that. Okay, um, I think that's it on that piece. Very good. The next part committee members is um, from a sub Roman number seven here. I'm going to highlight it. This is where the building commissioner would like to have a discussion regarding a vote with respect to the report that his office presented at the last meeting and the email that he sent on February 1st. 
this number eight? I'm sorry, did I say seven? I meant to say eight. Yes, thank you. Okay. Number, thank you. Uh, Fred, if you want to add anything to that. No, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Last meeting I had presented the what I see is the outstanding items from an ADA standpoint. I just want to make sure that the committee is okay with it or if you want me to take further action. So there's essentially, Mr. Chairman, committee members, what's highlighted on the screen is um, basically a vote for the committee to um, determine acceptance of the building commissioner's report. Um, do we have a motion from anybody to accept the commissioner's yeah. report? Yeah, I'll, I'll move that we accept the report that the building commissioner prepared and uh, submitted on the uh, third, three February meeting. We accept accept it as uh, as presented. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second it. Ian is Jimmy. seconded. Or Jim, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we have any comments? Okay, hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Dexter? Aye. Ian? Yes. Peter O'Neill? Yes. Jim Stewart? Yes. And Al Gordon, yes, so that's unanimous. Oh, very good, moving down the list, number nine. I know the last meeting we also had a discussion with respect to an application that was gonna be pre uh, submitted by the designer, Chukunski Humes, for the variance in reference to the handrails. Just wanted to um, highlight that, if there's any further discussions on that. Has that been submitted, Brian? Brian, Brian you muted. But it is true. It is true. It's not just your mom. It's it. All right, that's not me. Okay. Uh, it was <laughs> submitted on February 5th. Okay. So it was uh, mailed on the 5th. And we don't. We didn't anticipate a response by this meeting, but hopefully right. a response by the next meeting. Um, that included the $50 fee application fee we did send mailings out to fred and to the center for living in in worcester as part of that submission fred you should have gotten your packet i did and part of that uh i had given a recommendation letter to brian um as part of the package so yes we've got our package thank you okay thank you for doing that brian yeah i don't know what their scheduled meetings uh, dates are so We'll just wait. Okay. Thank you. If you're okay, Mr. Chairman, I'll move down to item four. Go ahead, Peter. Item four is um, the change order log that we're familiar with, the look ahead changes, and the budget, which no change since the last. Um, excuse me. There's the change order log right there. I did send this along by email to the committee. So you'll have that in your package. It's similar to the last couple of months. The look ahead changes as well. And then of course the multiple page budget, which uh, again, no uh, no change there either. The bottom line to the bottom line of to the budget pretty much remains consistent with the last meeting. I can zoom in a little bit on that where we're currently looking at these totals down at the bottom, essentially rows. 635 through 647 and I can probably take off I, I believe at this point will to be determined uh, rows 643 and 644 where those were just kind of some to be determined but we'll make a determination on that <clears throat> right now it looks like at this point in time based on the tracking the available uncommitted monies remain at $219,694.50. We can certainly come back to that if you'd like. Moving down the list though, I thought I'd have an opportunity for number five, any open discussion or items by anybody? Uh, yes, I, I just would like uh, Mr. John with Five Star. We still haven't got an update on our approved pay rack 33, which was for completed work, and we've still yet to be paid for that. It's been quite some time now. And then we also were requesting pay rack 34 as well. And that one was also for completed work that's been verified. And we even put in another one that was the additional amount of the completed punch list work verified on the last final walk. We still yet to get any approvals 
more payment on any of them three. We're, we're looking for over, you know, $50,000. Okay. We've noted that. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Wanted to bring it back up for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Peter. Okay. On the next item, if there's no other business on number five, is number six. There is one invoice. Um, apparently, back in um, November, December timeline, this was the commissioning agent's invoice for the period August to October. A little bit of a glitch on the timing of uh, the submission of that invoice versus the next building committee meeting. It never made it to the December OPM report. Uh, so I'm making a recommendation for the committee to consider approving the commissioning agent's invoice number 184210 in the amount of $465 for work performed between August 30th and October 3rd, 2020. The, the work has been done, Peter? Yes, it has. Uh, Alan, I'm, I'm, I'm go ahead, Dexter. Approve the invoice uh, number 184210 and the amount of $465 to NV5. I have a second. Yes, Peter O'Neill. Peter O'Neill, second. Any comments? Okay, I have a question, Peter. Will this be the last invoice we get from the commissioning agent? No, we still have, uh, they're about 85% billed out. We have about $4,464 remaining on their base contract. And will that be for the training that Jim Stewart just undertook for them? Uh, they have a final report to issue. They have a couple of final deliverables on the project and just uh, the final commissioning corrective action log update. I would anticipate hey. If things go well, we should have them wrapped up in another month or so. Hey, any other questions or comments? Okay, with none, I'll do a roll call vote. Dexter? Aye. Ian Johnson? Yes. Peter O'Neill? Yes. Jim Stewart? Jim, you're muted. I'm sorry, yes. Al Gordon, yes. So that's unanimous. Back to you, Peter. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, committee members. Um, number seven is just to look ahead for the next meeting, the first Wednesday of April, which would be the seventh. Is that agreeable with everybody? Yep. Good for me. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're all in agreement on that. That, that concludes uh, the presentation that I have prepared this morning. Anybody have anything else they need to bring up? Yeah, this is Ian. Just um, for the motion earlier, the kind of the walkthrough on the town side. I mean, if we can get that information out, um, you know, when that's completed, just the time yes. to review it before the next meeting. Just and any, you know, outstanding things. Just uh, personally for me, just be better prepared. Um, coming right. the meeting of what's out there. So that'd be great. All right, Jim Stewart, if you can make sure that's addressed to the board of selectmen, appreciate it. Yes. Okay. Um, anything further? Move to adjourn. Okay, next to move to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call, Dexter. Aye. Ian? Yes. Peter? Yes. Jim Stewart? Yes. Al Gordon, yes. So we are adjourned. All right, have a good day. Stay warm.